Okay, so um, in the previous video, we did an example where we had, um, I forget what it was, it was something like, I don't know, we had um, over x. We had all that squared. And we talked about the fact that we needed to expand that out before we could differentiate it. The other alternative in that instance would have been to use the chain rule, which is what we're going to look at today. As I said to you in the previous video though, if I only had a squared power here, I wouldn't use the chain rule. I can expand perfect squares efficiently enough even when the things inside them are ugly and ultimately I get something a bit nicer to work with at the end. If however this was even only a cubed, but certainly if it was a power of 8, I definitely wouldn't be expanding that out and so we need another method um, for differentiating things like this or it's helpful to have another method. Um, However, it's not really just about polynomial functions and obviously as we go through this chapter we're going to be looking at exponential functions and trig functions and log functions and differentiating those. So the key is that the chain rule is used to differentiate composite functions, okay, and that is when we have one function inside another function. So for example, in this one, which I just erased, sorry, so let's say we had that, we could think about the inside function as being 3t plus 2 over root t. Okay, so we could imagine that that's f of x and then the outside function, sorry, f of t, the outside function therefore is just t squared. And so what we've done here is we've taken f of t and we have subbed it into g of t, creating a composite function. So obviously sometimes when we're just dealing with polynomials, we can expand those out. Even if it was a power of 8, we could expand it out. However, when we get down the track, something like this, which is essentially f of x equals sine of x and g of x equals e to the x and we have substituted f into g. It's not possible to expand those and so we need um, another way to differentiate them. The main challenge in using the, the chain rule is identifying that the chain rule is needed. Okay, And that's the biggest challenge throughout all this differentiating differentiation. Do I need the product rule or the quotient rule or the chain rule here or don't I? Can I simplify it? Do I need to simplify it? Those decisions are what's important um, and, and that's where you just really need lots of practice here to, to start to identify quickly and efficiently when I need, when you need various rules. Okay, so the chain rule, as I said, it's about composite functions. So when we're using the chain rule, um, essentially what we do is we, well, one way I'm going, to, I'm going to prove the chain rule for you, and then I want you to not have to do this process every time. I'll do the first example with a longer process, but really you should be able to get to a point where you can use the chain rule um, without, you know, you can pretty much just write down the answer straight away. Um, so what we do is, in proving this rule, is we let doesn't have to be u, you can be any letter you want. I'm going to let u be equal to my inside function. Okay, so whatever the inside function is, whatever the function that's been substituted into the other function, I'm going to let u equal that. And in this case, in this composition, that's f of x. We've put f of x inside of g. Okay, and so in doing that, we now have two different rules. We have u equals f of x, which is what we let happen. Okay, and we then have, if we let u equal f of x, that means we've now replaced this with u and we now have y equals g of u. Okay, and so we have these two relationships and three variables now. Well, um, yeah, x, y and u. So thinking about this first one over here, okay, if we differentiate y, y is in terms of u because it's g of u, so the derivative of y with respect to u is dy du. And when we differentiate this with respect to u, it'll be g dash u. So dy du is equal to g dash u. And remembering that u is f of x. So we can put f of x back in here at the end. So we've got the derivative of g with f of x inside it. Okay. Thinking about the other function separately, or the other definition, we've got u equals f of x. So if we were to differentiate that, it's the derivative of u with respect to x, du dx. And that's equal to f dash x. When we differentiate this, we call that f dash, with respect to x, we call that f dash x. Now, the chain rule says this, okay? This is the chain rule. This is what I'll say in your formula sheet, but this is a little bit impractical. Um, and it's really very obvious. If I want to work out dy dx, I could, if it was helpful, break that up so that I instead write it as dy du times du dx. And this is just simple fraction work. I know that 3 fifths is equal to 3 over something times something over 5. And as long as whatever I put here is the same, those two, those things are going to be, sorry, those things are going to be equal. 
The same logic applies here. If I have dy dx, I could break that up and have dy over something times something over dx, and as long as these two things are the same, this will be equal, and we've, we've chosen to let that be du. And so therefore, thinking about what we've just calculated up here, we've worked out that dy du is essentially the derivative of g with f of x in it, and du dx is the derivative of f, the inside function. So personally, I prefer to be able to think about the chain rule in this way. It is the derivative of the outside function, g, with, with f still sitting in it, um, multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. Okay. All right, I'm going to do the first example in the long-winded way, and then I really want us to be able to use the chain rule without needing to introduce u at all. Okay, so here we have 2x minus 3x all squared, all to the power of 4. Okay, we could expand that out and not need to use the chain rule. Power of 4 is getting pretty high, and I don't really want to have to do it. So we're going to let u be equal to the inside function. So in this case, that is 2x minus 3x squared. So we're going to let u equal 2x minus 3x squared. And in doing that, we now create y equals u to the power of 4. Okay. Right, now if we differentiate each of these, du dx, derivative of 2x minus 3x squared is 2 minus 6x. And then differentiating this is called dy du, and the derivative of that is 4u cubed. And again, we know what u is, that's u, so we can put that back in. So this is the same as 4 times 2x minus 3x squared cubed. Okay, then we know dy dx is dy du multiplied by du dx. So we've got dy du up above here, it is 4 times 2x minus 3x squared all cubed. And then du dx, and be careful here, you must have brackets around that. If you haven't, if you don't write brackets around 2 minus 6x, it's saying something completely different. And this is a really common error from students just being careless about leaving off those brackets. It doesn't say the same thing without them. Your answer is not correct without them. Okay. And so there's dy dx. Now, I just want to take a step back and think about, we should really be able to do that in one line. Okay. So we had 2x minus 3x all squared to the power of 4. Okay, And thinking about what, what um, I had written above in function notation, so dy dx is derivative of the outside function with f of x still in it, multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. Okay, So what you want to imagine doing, and normally I do a lot of hand gesturing here, so this is a bit harder. Let me see if I can make this uh, yeah, okay. So what I'm going to imagine is, I'm just changing my highlighter to black, what I'm going to imagine here is we just basically put our hand over that and we have something to the power of 4. So when I differentiate something to the power of 4, I get 4 times the something to the power of 3. Okay? So, and that something was 2x minus 3x all squared. Okay? So just imagine covering over the inside function. Put your hand over the inside function and differentiate that outside function, just leaving the inside thing sitting there. 4 times something to the power of 3. Great. And then, so that's this bit, we've done that. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of f, which is the derivative of the inside. So differentiating 2 minus 3x squared, 2x minus 3x squared, sorry, is 2 minus 6x. And obviously the brackets are really important because we want to differentiate by all of that. So we really should be able to go straight. Sorry trying to erase that um, black line without erasing everything underneath it. Mm, okay, anyway, we'll just rewrite it back. Um, we should be able to go straight from here to here. You shouldn't need to let y equal 2x minus 3x squared. I really want you to practice that here. You actually don't have time in these exams to be doing long-winded chain rules. Um, you need to be able to be quicker than that. Um, so starting to practice not needing, you know, all these lines of working to get to your derivative. Okay, so let's try that here. So the first thing that I want to do, though, is to rewrite the square root as a power of a half so I can see what's happening. So I've got 5 times 2x squared plus 3 to the power of a half. Now again, I'm going to imagine covering up my inside function. So I've got 
five times something to the power of a half. So I should be able to differentiate that. It's going to be five on two, which is five times a half, times the something to the power of negative a half. Okay, and that something was two x squared plus three. All right, so, so now we've done that bit. That's the derivative of the outside function. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So that is, sorry, the derivative of 2x squared plus 3. And that will be 4x. Okay, so then we do want to combine together these terms floating around outside the bracket. So um, we're going to do, it'll be 20x on 2. So that'll be 10x times 2x squared plus 3 to the negative half. So you do need to go to that level of simplification, multiplying together the, the terms that can be multiplied together. Um, and then if you want to, you could, oh, now the other thing, I forgot to mark where I calculated derivative. So this was all equal to y above here, but this is no longer equal to y, we differentiated. So it is dy dx. Sorry, I normally don't even think about that. It's something I'm really particular about with you. So um, please be careful about that. I will <laughs> deduct marks when you do it. Um, so I'm annoyed with myself for doing it too. Um, we can write this as 10x over the square root of 2x squared plus 3. Okay, But both of these are perfectly correct answers. You have differentiated the question. You would, however, need to take it a step further from here. Okay, again, let's think about um, this function. Again, let's focus on rewriting it um, so that we can think about our rules for differentiating x to the power of n. So I want to write this as 2 times 3x to the 4 minus 5x all to the negative 7. Again, we want to think about cover up our inside function and just differentiate the outside. So I'm now differentiating dy dx. It's going to be negative 14, so that's 2 times negative 7. And it'll be the inside function to the power of negative 8. Okay, So this will be 3x to the 4 minus 5x. Um, and then we need to also multiply by the derivative of the inside. So that is the derivative of 3x squared minus 5x. And that will be 12x cubed minus 5. Again, the brackets there are important. Um, now, you can write that at the front if you want. There's no, if there was common factors in there, you would take them out and combine them together with the 14. But we don't have any common factors here. There's nothing more to do really than just... Um, you can leave the answer as it is, to be honest. You could write that bracket with the power of negative 8 on the denominator. So we could write this as negative 14, 12x cubed minus 5 all over 3x to the power of 4 minus 5x to the power of 8. Um, but you don't need to, okay? You're perfectly fine at this point. And in fact, I would encourage you to stop. One of the comments written in the examiner's report every year is students should be encouraged um, not to engage further than is necessary with questions. You'll take something that you had perfectly correct and make it incorrect by the time you um, fiddle around with it too much. Okay, our final example does require that you have some understanding of how the chain rule works um, beyond needing to let u equal the inside function. Although you could do that here, but it would be unnecessary. So we want to find the derivative of f when x equals 1, so that's our ultimate goal, if we know that f of x is g of x cubed plus x. So g is a function. This isn't g times. It's not a number outside of a bracket. And that's a bit hard to um, distinguish here, but it is g of x cubed plus x. So it's a composite function with x cubed plus x substituted into g. Um, and if we know that g dash, of g dash 2 is 8. Okay, so focus on what you're trying to find. You're trying to find f dash at 1. Before you can find f dash at 1, you need to find f dash of x. Okay, now we've got f dash of x up here. It is a composite function. So again, I'm going to cover up my inside function and I'm going to focus on differentiating the outside with the inside still sitting in there. So let me just write this out first. Sorry, let's leave that so we can see it. So f of x is g of x cubed plus x. Okay, so we're covering up our inside function, which is x cubed plus x, when we're differentiating. And so the derivative of the outside is just g dash of whatever's in there, which was x cubed plus x. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is x cubed plus x. The derivative of that is 3x squared plus 1. Okay, so then we want f dash at 1, which means substituting 1 into this. So that is g dash at 1 cubed plus 1 uh, multiplied by 3 times 1 squared plus 1. 
So this is g dash at 2 multiplied by, that's just going to be 3 plus 1, multiplied by 4. And we're told in the question that g dash at 2 is equal to 8. So this is just 8 times 4, and so this is 32. Okay, so we don't actually know what g of x is, but we have enough information here to answer this question. Okay, the work today on the chain rule is again from a worksheet which is found at the back of your blue booklet in Appendix C.